This episode is brought to you by Ivan, Stephen, Phil, and Art, this week's newest patrons. Hey guys, I didn't make a video last weekend. I'm sorry. I have a ton of stuff going on in my personal life and I had to just be Tim for a minute and not Lady K Sailing Tim, but I'm back and just in time because the cruising world just got rocked by Starlink again. Everyone just got this email. This week on Everything You Need to Know, the Starlink Ultimatum for Sailboats. We did an episode on Starlink a couple of weeks ago when they changed their plans and it looked like it wouldn't impact cruising sailboats all too much. The threat was that they might start calling us sailors out for using the service while moving or in the ocean, uh, which as per their terms of service, we weren't supposed to be doing. And of course, that's exactly what the email did. It called us out. Let me read it for you. Over the past 60 days, your Starlink has been used in areas that violate the terms and conditions of your service plan. Your plan does not include service on the ocean. So starting as early as May 9th, 2023, you will be unable to connect to the internet on the ocean, except to access your Starlink account, which is convenient, where you can make updates and changes. It goes on to tell you what your options are, and we're going to discuss those, but the message here is pretty clear. We know you used it on the ocean. It's what's missing from the message that we should talk about too, and what the sailing community is going to do about it. Most of my professional career has actually been spent working in the telecommunications industry, if you can believe it. I've worked for MCI in the US, for Comcast, for Bright House, as well as a very big supplier here in Canada. And all this feels a little too familiar for me. What's happening with Starlink right now feels like the early days of every other technology. If you're old enough to remember the long distance calling wars of the 1990s or how cellular service proliferated across the planet, things were sketchy at first and the plans kept changing for those technologies. It seemed like companies were trying to see what billing model that they could use to extract the maximum amount of monthly service fees from us. And if you could remember when text messages were 10 cents per message, it was crazy back then. It usually took about a decade for things to get ironed out with a new technology and for them to find sort of a singular billing practice to take the lead. And now, of course, at this point, you pay one price literally for everything your cell phone can do or your home phone if you still have one of those. Between competition and government intervention, the phone companies eventually settled their butts down. And I think that's where we are with Starlink right now. It's a brand new technology. And at this moment, there's really no competition for exactly what they offer and the way they offer it. And there's very little in the way of government guidelines. You can either play ball with their prices and plans and constant changes as it were, or you can go back to where we were before. As an example, you'd be, let's say, on the east coast of the US with an American SIM card in your phone, and you'd have internet. If you needed really good internet to, say, upload a YouTube video, you'd stay in a marina for the night, and that's what I did. When you left Florida, though, for the Bahamas, your internet would stop working a few miles offshore, and you were truly disconnected. When you landed in the Bahamas, you would buy another SIM card from them, pop it into your phone and you'd have internet again. If you happen to need internet on the ocean though, you would have to remortgage the boat and use the extra funds to subscribe to a satellite based system. And you'd have internet, very slow internet. When Starlink came, it changed all that. Starlink was clear with us sailors though from the beginning. They specifically said that it is a land based product that we were not to use at all in the ocean or on the move. But Sailors quickly realize that both of those things do work, so we've been using it. What Starlink is saying in this email here now is it isn't okay anymore, and they emailed all of us to let us know that they know what we did, and we can't do it anymore. They could have just unplugged us. We violated the terms and conditions for sure, but they didn't unplug us, for now anyway. But the message here is clear. No more cheating. Also, 
it's going to get more expensive for us. And what they're asking us to do isn't actually all that bad right now. We can keep the cheapy $150 a month plan and simply only use it on land. Now, that means for sure depowering Dishy if you're going to go for a sale. You can't just not use it because it's still on. It still knows where it is. You need to depower it, unplug it, shut the switch off, whatever it is. When you get back to land, you can turn the switch back on and no one's the wiser. You know, Starlink won't know that you went for a sale because everything was off. Or you could upgrade to the plan that they're now calling, it was Rome and now it's now it's called Mobile Priority. Uh, and this is the plan that we can use in the ocean and we can use it while we're moving, all for the low price of $250 a month, which is a lot more than a lot of sailboats are gonna wanna fork out. But that $250 a month, it's not even unlimited. Just like the early days of internet packages, you get a monthly cap and the cap is fairly small depending on what you're using your internet for on your boat. 50 gigabytes a month specifically, so you won't be watching Netflix very often. And when that 50 gigabytes is gone, you can keep using it at that speed for an extra $2 per gigabyte. This all feels a lot like the early cell phone plans, doesn't it? So that's the plan. Starlink wants us all to switch to the 250 a month mobile priority plan, but they have left another small window open for us sailors for right now. And I promise this won't last because these sorts of things never do. We have the ability to change out our plan whenever we want. So basically you can keep the cheapy land-based plan and then switch on mobile priority when you need it. So on the east coast of the US, for example, you use the cheap plan when you're at anchor or in a marina. And when you plan to make your leap across the Gulf Stream, you switch on mobile priority. And then when you get to the Bahamas, you switch it back off. Now we've seen stuff like this switch on, switch off sort of thing before with a lot of different services. And it usually seems like it's just a gimmick that companies are offering to appease us for a little while while they go in the background and kind of make everything more expensive. In six months from now, if history tells us anything, the switch on, switch off will probably be gone. It's just too hard to manage all the billing issues that it's probably gonna cause. What's left when the switch on, switch off gimmick is gone though will be $150 a month for land-based use, $250 a month for water-based use, and the mega yacht service that none of us can afford anyway. I think that one's still called Star Starlink Marathon. Your true options here are pretty simple for the moment. Stick with the land-based service and depower it if you're going to be sailing. And then when you get to a foreign country, keep your fingers crossed that it'll still work. Right now they're saying you can change your address when you land somewhere, but again, too complicated. I don't think that'll last. If you absolutely need internet on the ocean, you're going to need that next plan up, the mobile priority for $250 a month with the 50 gigabyte limit. For now, switch that on when you need it and switch it off when you don't. But don't plan on being able to do that for long and you're going to end up just paying for the $250 a month regardless. Now I've been poring over the community reactions to all this and while people are confused by the changes because they keep changing the name of everything, and some people are pretty upset by the changes, a lot of questions have arisen. For example, is it really that much more expensive for Starlink to be on the ocean as compared to land? Is it more expensive for them? Technically it is. On land, one satellite can cover thousands upon thousands of houses paying customers. It makes it worth it to cover that area, say Southern Florida, loads of customers worth the satellites to do it. On the ocean though, you don't have those customers. Also think about this, we're paying right now for the infrastructure. Launching satellites is expensive. The network is expensive. The backhaul is expensive. By the time our kids are cruising on their own boats, I think things will be a lot better. Think about the cell phones again. Everyone right now is paying for this stuff and it's an investment in the future of the internet on our planet. And it won't just be Starlink. Big things are happening with other rocket ship owning billionaires as well. Amazon is set to start launching their similar service to cover the entire planet with internet and that presents some interesting things. Amazon's business model is usually to launch a product losing money 
in order to get it up and running. The whole company didn't make money for more than a decade, almost two decades. And Amazon will likely come in with a service that's not only a little bit better, but also a little bit cheaper. And it'll drive the Starlink fees down, which will then come back and drive the Amazon fees down. We're talking five years from now, but that stuff is happening right now. We're a part of it. We're just on the crappy part of the journey, the long distance calling wars, the 10 cent text messages era, if you will. We're gonna pay the price for a future where a flat monthly fee will have internet on all your devices anywhere in the world. Lady K. Saline is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. If you like the channel and wanna help out, please consider becoming a patron. That's it for this week, guys. Until the, until next week, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. Mm -hmm.